So today I've deleted all the top players in Major League Baseball. No Trout, no Judge, no Otani. And instead we're left with some of some, some of the finer players. Elvis Andrews, Rich Hill. Of course, this roster is in the vault if you're looking for it. What they've done is they've, delete, they've deleted every player that's 76 and above, and they've left all the players 75 and below on top of some of the rookies are in there as well. So what I want to do is I just want to see who comes out as the MVP, who's going to win a World Series, essentially who's got the best AAA squad. That's what we're looking at. All right, so it doesn't really matter what team we're going to have here. Instead, we're just going to go three, two, one, boom. We're going to be the Rockies, which they're currently ranked seventh. So clearly they've got a nice little squad <laughs> compared to the other teams. We're going to leave everything as auto manage. And as we get into the regular season, let's take a look at some of the teams around the league. So... What's going to be the best way to do this? I guess we can go through the pitching rotation first and make our way. Wow, the Dodgers looking a little rough without some of their bigger names and just kind of see who's who's hanging out in the league. Who's who's still here? And if you do see some players, like I said, that are above that 75 rating, either they're a rookie or they somehow snuck in into the roster, which we'll, we'll see if there's any that snuck into the roster. So I'm, I'm noticing like there's still some decent pitchers in the league mostly like relievers but for the most part yeah we're we're noticing that there's there's definitely some uh oh boy i have a feeling some runs are going to be scored for sure royals i'm assuming that's pretty close to their bullpen in real life let's see who else we've got going on here man the astros look pretty bad too Eek. the angels that looks that looks like the angels bullpen too i mean you've got loop you've got tapera i mean what more could you want the athletics probably probably everybody that's uh on the MLB roster is on the athletics, to be honest. George Kirby, I don't think he's rookie eligible. Like, yeah, 130 innings in 2022 can't be no, because it's 150 at bats and it's a it's a 50 innings pitched for a pitcher. So there's no way he's rookie eligible. So the Marlins, the Marlins, the Mariners are cheating because they've got an 82 overall player who is not a rookie. Cheaters, he's the cheating. Maybe the guy who created this roster, the person who created this roster is a Mariners fan. That's the only thing that I can, you know, that, that's the only thing that makes sense. Obviously, Kodai Senga, he's a rookie. That makes sense. He hasn't pitched in the majors before. He's, yeah, that's, that's an advantage. That's definitely an advantage for sure. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else, but it, it seems like every other team follows the rules. 75 and below. And man, some of these teams look real bad really bad Oof. this is gonna be interesting like the bullpen like you might be able to get away with some of these pitchers like the, the starting rotation and everything but once you start getting into that bullpen runs are gonna be scored because ah uh, maybe not man this is this is bad Woo. this looks this looks really bad yeah this looks bad wow there's a lot of like 70 like below 70 overall players Yoshida. Yoshida's gonna hit like 800 home runs. That's not fair. That's 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 crazy. Yoshida's a what was that? An 86? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna destroy the league. He's gonna hit like 70 home runs. We might have a Barry Bond season. I think the closest we've had was like what 67 home runs or something like that. And that came. Ooh, that's been that's been so many years on the channel now. I forgot what. That, ah, I forgot what rebuild that was too, but someone hit a stupid amount of home runs. It was crazy. Vinny Pasquantino might also hit quite a few home runs. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else that really stands out to me. I'm not really seeing any. There's a couple, but like nothing too crazy. Jared Walsh might, Urshela might do pretty well. But for the most part, I feel like we're looking like pretty competitive around the league. Like there really isn't any team that's stands out above the rest. At least from what I'm seeing. Ooh, okay. Like Arise, Solaire. Even Brian De, De La Cruz might be kind of nice. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's like any of those like sneaky players. Like Guillaume is probably going to hit like 400. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Guillaume is about to have like the craziest season ever in terms of average. Anybody else? Ian Happ? Ian Happ's about to break the home run record too. That's not fair. There's just no, no, that's not fair. Ian Happ can't be part of this. There's just no way Ian Happ, <laughs> Christian Yelich, Jesse Winker, what? Yeah, low key, the, the Brewers might, the Brewers might be kind of good. They've got that, those glitchy players. O'Neill Cruz, I'm pretty sure is not a rookie. He's not, he is not a rookie. 
There's no way he is a rookie. He is definitely pit he played over um, uh, 150 at bats. Not a rookie. That's cheating too. Let's see anybody else. I think that's it. I think we've kind of gone through everything and seen who's still in the league and who's not. But there's a couple cheaters out there. That's not fair. All right, we're not even at the all-star break yet. We got a, a big move, a big move. Kodai Senga to the, the Yankees? Almost said to the Mets, but he was already on the Mets. Kodai Senga to the Yankees. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see who the all-stars are in the league. Okay, some nice little pitching going on from a couple different players. Bullpen's looking kind of gross little gross on the national league side same thing with Le leclerc and sam kira ruiz is hitting 305 no chance no chance all right 17 home runs from Derek hall you got 19 for orlando arcia 360 average for luis arias yeah kind of made sense kind of makes sense anybody else kind of popping off mark canna a little bit with 16 home runs jack peterson's got 16 who else um no one no one else really it's kind of quiet kind of quiet so if we look at the american league side okay so kodai sanga is there we've got maeda baz it might be baz Ooh, garrett clevenger that's nasty that's nasty Ooh, mj melendez has a 280 average with 13 home runs 294 james mccann you can't be serious 319 average for josh naylor colton wong has 14 home runs when was the last time he did that oh uh last year actually okay i didn't realize he had 15 with the, the brewers last year okay and 14 the year before with uh the brewers again i didn't realize he had that that high of a number interesting i i didn't realize it was that high the more you know the more you know kyle farmer is hitting 307 324 for royce lewis 320 for Yoshino, who's got 18 home runs, 350 for Michael Brantley, Nico Holsizer. If you don't know about Nico Holsizer, he looks like a like an off-brand Fernando Tatis Jr. I'm not slamming the guy, but it, it, you know, that's the kind of vibe I get from him. Like if you if you like had blurry vision a little bit in the distance, you'd be like, ooh, that might be that might be Tatis. And instead, it's just Nico Holsizer. But again, yeah, if you don't know Nico Holsizer, check him out. Check him out. Uh, Edward Olivares hit 290 with 15 home runs. It's pretty impressive. And if we take a look at the standings around the league, you've got the Giants in the West, the Brewers in the Central, and the Mets in the East. And actually, all the divisions are pretty close. The wild card currently looks like this. If we head over to the uh, American League, you've got the Yankees, the Tigers, and the Mariners with the, the wild card currently looking like this. So, okay. It's, it's pretty competitive. There's like three, four teams vying for every single division. We've seen the All-Stars. We've seen who's popping off. The Dodgers traded JD Martinez to the Rockies for some reason. Whatever. Let's see if we get any more crazy trades. Nolan Gorman to the Rockies. Nolan Gorman to the Rockies. Okay. What other trades do we have? Loriano got traded. Mondesi got traded. Chad Green got traded. Savali getting traded to the Nationals was an interesting one. The Mets and the Yankees make another swap. Peraza going to the Mets for Ronnie Mauricio and Mark Vientos. Verdugo to the Marlins. F. Ross to the Braves. Aguilar got traded for Kelnick. Okay. What else do we have? Any other big any other big moves? We saw the Gorman one. And I think that might be it. I think that might be it. IKF got traded to the Cubs. Um, Naylor to the Braves. We saw the JD Martinez. Dylan Carlson to the White Sox. Okay. Brennan Donovan goes to the Brewers for Jackson Churio. The Cubs acquired Trevor May. Bohm goes to the Padres, which is an interesting one. And I think that might be it. The Giants got Justin Steele. Drew Jones got traded. Any other big names? Perry Ford for Paredes. Uh, Jackson Churio's brother, Jason, got acquired by the Cubs. Urias went to the Marlins. So the Marlins are making make some moves all right let's see who finishes off the year as the as the uh the playoff teams i was gonna say as the champion but we're not just gonna hop straight to the world series we need to see the whole shebang mvp cy young who made the postseason who missed the postseason are we hitting like 70 home runs doesn't look like it but there's a chance so the rockies made the postseason and let's take a look here they actually won the division by one game against the Padres and the Giants. Wild card is the Cubs, Pirates, and Padres. Wow, the Giants didn't make it. That's crazy. 
So the Brewers won the Central and the Mets won the East. If you look at the American League wild cards, you've got the White Sox, Tigers, and Angels, the Mariners with the West, the Twins with the Central, and the Rays with the East, and the Yankees don't make the postseason. After being in first at the All-Star break, league leaders-wise, you've got Arise, who hit 350. The next closest was Alfonso Rivas, who hit 328. Okay. On the other side, it was 326. So that, that's a pretty big difference between the two league leaders. Hits-wise, 195 for Arise, 181 for Olivares. Doubles was 42 for Gonzalez and 42 for Mark Canna. Did Mark Canna just like pop off? Yeah, he did. He's probably MVP. He's probably Mark Canna, the MVP. Tim Locastro tied Tyler Naquin for triples. Astoria Ruiz had nine for the Royals, who's... He's actually an A, right? So he got traded there. Home runs was 43 for Yoshida. The next closest was 28. What? And then Urias had it with the Marlins on the other side, tying Jock Peterson. But 43 to 28. That's a crazy drop off. 113 RBIs, 97 for Sheets, 122 for uh, Marcana, 109 for Jock Peterson. That That's kind of gross. All right, let's take a look at the awards. Marcana, yeah, he won MVP. I mean, the dude, the dude turned into just the best hitter in baseball. Jock Peterson, if the average and stuff wasn't so low, he probably had a chance. And then Luis Urias had a pretty good season, but nothing compares to what Marcana just did. And stealing 18 bases. Pretty impressive. Yoshida obviously gonna win it on the other side. Those are those are crazy numbers too. Gavin Sheets, not bad though. Not bad at all. Kyle Farmer also in the mix. Sion goes the the cheater. George Kirby doesn't count. He doesn't win it. Instead, it's Kodai Senga of the Yankees. Or you can give it to Shane if you'd like. I think he deserves it. Graham Ashcraft of the Reds wins it. Had a nasty season. Wow, 264 ERA was like a 1.1 whip. Batting title went to Arise and Brantley. And then you've got Whistler and Luis Garcia with 57 saves. Whoo, Luis Garcia. Four blown saves, too. Not bad. Rookie of the year goes to Brandon Pifat. No one told me how to say his name, so I probably butchered again. Masataka Yoshida wins rookie of the year on the other side. And now it's postseason time. As you can see, the playoff picture's on screen. Let's see. Can the Rockies defeat the Padres? They do. And they're now taking on the Mets with the Cubs and the Brewers on the other side of the bracket. And then you've got the, or I guess you'd say the same side of the bracket, the other NLDS with the White Sox and the Twins and the Angels and the Rays. So let's see what happens here. The Mets are eliminated by the Rockies and we have the Rockies and the Brewers and the White Sox and the Rays. All right. How are we going to finish this off here? It is going to be a Brewers World Series and they are going to be taking on the Rays. So Brewers and Rays. Let's go take a look at the Rays first. What's their lineup looking like? Espinal, Josh La Lowe, not Lau, Lowe. Ramirez, he's got to be good in this too, right? No. Margot. Oh, Margot was pretty nasty. Ben Gamble, Jose Siri, Mejia, Basabe, and Curtis Mead. Their pitching is probably pretty nasty for this. And then the other team was what? The Brewers. Oh, the, yeah, we, yeah, the Brewers are gross. And they got Brendan Donovan. They've got Luke Voigt, who probably hit, yeah, 30 home runs. De La Cruz? Oh, the Brewers made all the right moves. And Yelich is on the bench. And he was still kind of nice. Yeah, this team's gross. That's not fair. The Brewers are cheaters. Um, let's go take a look here. Let's head over to the Rays. And let's see how this plays out. So game one, it's a raise victory. Game two, it's tied one to one. Milwaukee is one game away. Let's hop into it. Let's do a little play game. Okay. And we manage full game. We'll be the Brewers, I guess. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. But let's hop into it. And Eric Lauer can take the mound. Boom. And you're probably thinking, wait, you can't control it. Let the CPU do it. I figured a way to do it. All right, so we're going to hop into this screen. You're going to see this action right here. I'm going to I'm going to back out, press start, and I'm going to go to exit, right? And I'm going to go simulate and exit and immediately press square to stop it. We missed one play. It was a it was a ground out, but now I can just go next at bat. Yeah, Christian Yelich goes deep. And now the CPU is in full control. I'm literally just hitting next at bat and I'm letting the game play out. So Tampa Bay took the lead 2 to 1 and let's see what else happens here. 
Ooh, two to two thanks to Brian. No, Brian De La Cruz, not Brian Anderson, Brian De La Cruz. It's pretty impressive that Brian Anderson can also play for the Brewers alongside broadcasting their games, being in the booth for them. That's a that's a talk about the duality of man right there. That's a that's pretty impressive skill set. So next up, we've got two to two. Is this is this how it's gonna end? Is this how it's gonna end? Ooh, Zunino on second base. No run score. Michael Brosso. They're gonna bring in a new pitcher, Sean Armstrong. Three to two. Man, what's gonna happen? Can they bring it back? Still three to two. Still three to two. Yelich gets on base. I think that's game. I think that's game. I think that is it. They're gonna bring in a new person. New person. New pitcher. Hobby Milner. And still, man, you got to score there. First and second with what was it? One run? Yeah, or one out? You got to score there. And now it's six to two. The Brewers just did the damage. Okay, a little little base runner, a little late inning action, a little rally. I don't think it's going to happen. One run scores thanks to Basabe. And instead, how is this going to end here? Let's just, uh, let's play ball. Let's see what happens. We're going to, we're going to let it play out. I'm, I'm just, we're just going to let it play out here. That's a ball. Okay. Uh, play ball again. I can't change the camera angle. It's, it's annoying. I know. I mean, I probably could, but I don't want to mess with it and completely mess it up. So I'm just going to let this, we're going to let it play out. I can, I can kind of move the camera around a little bit, but like I said, I don't want to mess with anything and just completely mess everything up because I know that's what's going to happen. So here we are. 3-0 count. Can the Rays stay in it? And they walk it first and second. It's looking a little interesting now. I just I just want to play ball. Let's just play ball. Let's see what happens. Espinal hits lefties better. There is still is a chance he could do some damage here. Aaron Ashby is just not throwing strikes. So 2-0. Is that six strike balls by Aaron Ashby? That's that's pretty bad. Gets the call there. Okay. Oh, Espinal fouls it off. 2-2 now down to their last strike here it comes what's gonna happen it is going to be fouled off espinal stays alive just barely just barely so here we go here we are last strike last out pitch Ooh, just inside all right three two count runners on the move grounds out to third throws it over to first it's over it's over. Brewers win. So there it is. Brewers World Series winners with the 75 and below player challenge sim, whatever you want to call it. I mean, pretty interesting. Pretty cool to see. And I mean, home run, home run, home run, home run. It was a little home run derby for the Brewers there. Let's go see who MVP was. World Series MVP is Brendan Donovan. Postseason MVP was Luke Voigt, who hit six home runs. I mean, Brendan Donovan was like just an automatic hit at that point. And then on the other side, it was Espinal, who had 13 RBIs for the Rays in the postseason. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. That is deleting all the top players in MLB The Show or MLB, whichever you want to call it. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel for new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section. Let me know what other type of videos you want to see next. That's about it. I highly recommend that you check out this video right here. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.